Welcome to Epic Elite Crucible. Now, before I go over to Crucible, I wanted to just give you a little tip here. In case you're not aware, I'm outside of uh, Cabal for One. And if you want to get the uh, Explorer that's over here and you don't want to run through Feast or Famine, you can just jump on, on this little stalagmite thingy here and then use your abundant step or whatever and come right over here and you can fight all these guys that spawn and get that chest there and you can go up this ramp and get your explorer which is right here or you can just do the quest feast or famine and you come out of this cave if you do the little optional at the end by ringing the gong alright let's head over to crucible So I've wanted to do a solo uh, EE Crucible video for a while, but there are a lot of other tutorials on YouTube, so I just kind of skipped it because everybody else has already done it. So, but, you know, I figure it's time to do my own. I do have this long-term goal of doing a video for every quest in the game, and that's a good one to do at level 26. I'm level 26 now, and I am in an off destiny. I'm working on my martial epic pass lives. And uh, happy Thanksgiving, by the way. It is uh, actually 2.30 in the morning after Thanksgiving, so a little belated. And this video probably won't hit until Christmas time. Uh, we had a Night Rebels uh, encore last weekend, and so for those four days or whatever, I, that's all I did. And I got up to, I think, 59 uh, of those augments of the spooky augments that's beyond the you know three or four that I used on my tunes or and uh, my little secret is that I'm my, my guildies know that I have all, all these and they think I'm gonna sell them on the shard exchange but I'm actually giving them all the way to my guildies for Christmas and I feel okay saying that on the video because I don't think this video is gonna hit until Christmas time <laughs> but maybe it'll come out before Christmas <laughs> maybe some of them will find out um, beforehand, but okay. So working on Marshall Epic Past Lives, and uh, I've got two of those now. So you know I've got my three colors of the Queen, three Primal, and then three Brace from the Divine Sphere. Now I've got two Skill Masteries from Marshall. Uh, so I'm almost getting ready to get my third level 26. You know I'm gonna Epic reincarnate as soon as I hit 28, and then start working on the Arcane. Uh, and I'm, there I'm going to want to go for enchant weapon. That's that's a much better option than energy criticals for I think most warlocks, especially if you're doing Fey Pack, because I'm not doing any of the damage types that energy criticals would cover, which is acid, fire, electric, and cold. You know, if you're a great old one packed or you're fiend packed warlock, maybe I still think that probably enchant weapons is the better option because it's going to that's going to cover all your damage types. I'm really trying to get Epic Completionist uh, before U29 hits. I don't think I'm going to make it, but I know I'm going to get very close. Okay, what else? Gear-wise, I think th this is pretty much all exactly the same as stuff that I've covered before in other videos. Nothing is new. Enhancement-wise, nothing is new. This is exactly the same as I have been playing it. And in terms of the Epic Destiny, I'm doing Legendary Dreadnought. I don't really feel like there's a really good mar martial destiny for me to be in. You know, if I run Grandmaster, you know, there's some saves and stuff I can benefit from, so maybe I should probably run in there. But I just decided to take the Constitution here to be extra survivable. And there's a couple, like, you know, critical hit things in there. Maybe I should probably learn to use all the clickies, but. Not very much of it applies to me, so just going with the Constitution, really, and that's about it. So, uh, Crucible is a terrifying quest to newbies, as it was to me when I was new, and uh, but this quest is worth awesome, awesome XP, and I'm just showing you there's a bunch of breakables up here that you're going to want to get. Um, especially if it's your first time. I'm not going to do them for the video, but just want to show you there's some over here too 
that people either don't know they're here or they forget about. So you're going to get these breakables down here and of course you want to get your fungus. And a bunch of boxes and stuff over here. But Crucible is not so bad. And so hopefully, you know, if this is a, a, a mystifying quest for you or a scary quest for you, hopefully you know, by watching this, it'll uh, help you feel like you can do it on your own. Totally solvable. And it's a fun challenge to solve. So there's some optionals here you can do. Uh, there's some uh, charisma skills, di diplomacy, bluff, and intimidate uh, with, that you do with these guys. I can't even tell you what specifically each one of these guys does, but they all do something. Like, uh, you know, one of them, I think it's the guy over here. We talk to him. Uh, if you successfully intimidate him, I think he's the one, well, one of them, you know, is something about a map and it, you know, where the, where the, in the hallway where the floor breaks out and there's the water below. If you don't make that check, the floor isn't pre-broken out, you know, so then it's easy to fall through. But if you do the successful check, then you get to see where, you know, the holes are. And there's another one that you do, if you make the check, then you don't have to fight that guy in the end, or one of the guys in the end, and... I can't remember what the other ones do, but you're gonna want to try. <laughs> you're gonna want to try to get these. Uh, and I have my golden guile, which is a great uh, diplomacy and bluff item, very easy to get out of Lords of Dust. So I'm gonna put that on, and then I've got a concordant opposition plus six charisma skills helm that I'm gonna put on just for this. This is like a 62 or something diplomacy check. Yeah, failed there. Failed keep trying though. Ooh, no, it's higher than I thought it was. There we go. And then you come over and you talk to this guy and he's a another diplo check. Got that. This guy over here is a intimidate check. Success. And then finally we're gonna finish up with Dagger Tooth doing a bluff check. And got that one. I'm going to use a wand of protection from evil. That's going to protect me from command. There are a lot of casters in here that like to cast command. And command will protect you from um, mental compulsions like command. Might only be if it's cast by an evil creature though. Adventure pack. I definitely miss having renewal from Unyielding Sentinel. I really like having that secondary heal option. Cocoon is kind of a long cooldown. And so renewal is a nice is nice supplemental healing. So the maze is, you know, really confusing to people who are new to Crucible. And there is a, an animated GIF that somebody made that I'm going to link to in the video that really helped me learn it, you know, years ago. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a link to that, but basically there are three sections to this maze. And in each section there's a valve that controls doors that toggle just in two positions. And there's, so there's the I valve here, you can see the I plate there, and then there's an H valve, and there's a K valve. 
And so there's just an objective to do in each of the three zones, the I zone, the K zone, and the H zone. And that objective is to pick up the crest, and then you also have to put a crest in the socket in each of the three zones. And the, the crest locations, they're always in the same place, but which crest is in which location is random. So you may not have the crest in this zone that fits the socket in this zone, so you have to backtrack through a little bit. So the way that we're going to solo this is by bringing out our owl bear or your panther, or if you can use your wolf if you're a druid, or you can use your iron defender if you're an artificer. I'm going to put them on passive. I'm going to park them. And now we're going to hit the eye valve and come over here and get the first crest. So there was the first crest there on the on the floor. I'm gonna target the oops, I want to get this vase out of here so we don't target that by accident. Target the valve. Let's get these breakables. So they're not targeted by accident. Hey, we had the right socket. So this can be a little tricky here. Uh, because if you lose the target, then Sometimes he's a little uncooperative. Oops. Did that too soon. So don't start targeting these guys. Okay, so I lost my target on, <laughs> on the valve. So let's see if I can just, if you just hit the gears, since he's standing right in front of it, hopefully he'll hit the valve. But he's he's running around the maze right now, so sometimes you have to hit it a few times. But if you have D door, this becomes not such an emergency. If you don't have D door, then you're basically you gotta recall out and come back in, which is then you're losing XP. All right, got him to hit it. And we want him to hit it one more time. There we go. Now we're done with the eye section. And now we're going to do the K section. I didn't notice if I picked up the right crest, and I did. Perfect. But now we want to bring I'm going to take out this guy so he doesn't start hitting my owl bear. And one of the things that's cool is your chain blast can ricochet off of him and and hit the other mobs around. Now some people will tell you don't hit the mobs up there because it's going to spawn casters. Well the casters are already there, it's just you know it will aggro the casters onto you, which can, can make things kind of messy. Your choice, but uh, if you're not leading then you're going to want to listen to your leader. Unless he doesn't know what he's doing. Tell our guy to hit the K valve. Hit it again. And here's our third crest. So we might have had to go back and, you know, put crests in sockets, but um, we don't have to do that. Just making things simpler for this run. 
Here's the H valve. Call the owl bear. Park him. Target the valve. And with the last cr uh, crest in the socket, grab our horn. Triggers traps, jump out of there. Hit the eye valve. Should be home free. Now there is a chest behind here. Um, you can get it uh, by having somebody hit the eye valve while you're here or you can just drop down from above at the end. Or, um, but then you're going to be stuck. So you know, you do it at the end, then you just recall out or something. You know, like if you if you're by yourself, if or you can you know park the owl bear there and do it too. Don't need the owl bear anymore though, so I'm going to go ahead and dismiss him. Now one thing I want to show you is there's a valve down here that affects the flow of the water right here. Now you don't have to toggle that, but uh, it affect it just turns off the current, so it makes it a lot easier to swim through. And it can be helpful, you know, if you're newer, you know, and you don't have like the swim down really well, you can have somebody stay at that valve. Uh, preferably somebody with water breathing or that doesn't need to breathe <laughs> and uh, just keep toggling that uh, so that when you're doing the swim you don't have to deal with the current and you you, you toggle it and then you know it turns back uh, it becomes untoggled like after about 30 seconds or so and you just need to hit it again Uh, with this part, trap room, obstacle course kind of thing, um, you're going to want to come back through here and do all the breakables, lots of breakables in here. It's great to send an evasion tune in here if you don't have the PRR to be able to survive all those traps. Grab the horn of agility. It triggers these traps, but with our PRR, no problem. So this is the part where I was saying if you didn't do the one check, this floor would appear solid and then when you walked over the parts that are broken out, they would break out under your feet and then you would fall. So it's really helpful to do that check. So here, book and you should get should get a message that says you sense that the fifth door hides death so if you look on the on the floor here you can see they're they're numbered one two three four five six so this should be a fifth door nope so 
I guess it's what am I told? I can't verify this. Um, I probably should look this up ahead of time, but I guess if you if you have you need a low wisdom for that to be right or something, a lot of people will just keep doing the same door over and over. Sixth door hides death. Nope. Okay. So, we're just going to keep doing the same one over and over. You basically have a, if you're trying this at random, you, you know, you have a one in six chance against six doors. You're looking for the door that has the horn. Also great for an evasion to do this uh, because of the traps but if you have high PRR and high hit points no problem so there's the dude that's killed off we don't have to fight him in the end fight because we made that charisma skill check uh, at the beginning so this part can be a giant pain in the ass if you just start jumping in there and think you're gonna take them all on head on because all these casters are gonna sleet storm you they're going to command you, they're going to comma fall you, they're going to knock you down, you can't get up, and they just overcome you. So be really careful about this part. Also, you're going to want to hit this valve or this lever because this is what drops these ladders here. So if you fall, you can just take the, the ladders back up. I need to redo my protection from evil. sorts of nastiness. So this is obviously, this is the maze that we're above now. And so these are the casters that, you know, if you start shooting stuff up top, you're going to start aggroing them and they're starting to cast down on you and it can be a pain. You know, here's where I ought to have an epic court of reprisal, because that has a, like a, a guard on it that protects you from soundburst stun. I really need to make it a priority to get one of those. It's not actually a bad item for a Fey Pact Warlock too, because it has uh, resonance 144 on it. Probably should be wearing it instead of my Min 2 belt put them into somewhere else, but I got them into belt. No big deal. That comes from Necro 4, by the way. I can't remember which quest in particular. So this is fun to solo. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have a wheel that we don't have to turn. So uh, this part uh, you pull the lever, and then it tells you which rune wheels have to be turned to which symbol. And if you can communicate that symbol to, you know, ideally you have a person at each of the 
three rune wheels. There's green, blue, and uh, yeah, red, blue, green. And ideally, you know, you have a person at each rune wheel, and you just call out, you know. <laughs> I did a um, a video a few months back about how to do the puzzle wheel in uh, Von 4, and I talked about what I call these symbols. And I'm going to link that video because it's helpful to know how to refer to these symbols. You see these symbols throughout the entire game, and sometimes, like right now, you need to be able to communicate to your party members what symbol that is. But I call this the F, Helmet, Alien, Elephant, H, and Scorpion. That will make more sense if it doesn't already to you. Uh, if you watch this other video that I'll link, uh, you may have other names for them. There are other names for them, but that's what I call them. And that's, you know, I didn't make those up. That's what I've heard other people call them throughout the years. So. So we're gonna have to be pretty quick about this, but you got you actually got a pretty decent amount of time. But the other way to sort of do this, and I think this will only work for the first iteration, and yeah, it will only work for the first iteration, is that you can look at where the colors are, and based on the position, you can tell them how many times to hit the wheel. So you wouldn't have to communicate what the symbol is, you just tell them how many times to click the wheel. And it's one less than the position of the light. I'm trying to explain this in a way that'll make sense. So, you know, here's position one, here's position two, here's position three, four, five, and six. So, if it appeared in position six, if that color, like let's say red, appeared here, they would have to click red five times, one less than the position. If the red one appeared here, it would be click the red one zero times. The blue one appeared here, it would be click the blue one two times. It's one less than the position. So let's see if we can get this first try. So it's red 5, green 4, blue 2. Red 5, green 4, blue 2. Oh, that was a lot of turning. So I didn't, we didn't do it fast enough. Unless I messed something up, which I think I did because it didn't reset yet. Okay, let's try this again. So now it's going to be <laughs> blue elephant, green alien, red F. Blue Elephant, Green Alien, Red F. I got to show you both ways. I'm not sure. I'm, I think I messed it up the first time because I think that you haven't you have the enough time to do it, or the time you have to do it is until it toggles back. I think. In any event, that's how you do that. sure that you come over here and you open this gate because it'll be a shortcut later and now we got the swim dun 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 not to worry uh, if you have merfolk's blessing that's awesome if you add haste uh, if you got a bugle pot to give you some extra hit points and you click your shining through and if you didn't know this this is really cool 
shining through works underwater. Most healing doesn't work under you, you can't cast spells underwater. And you have very few options or places in here that you can sort of jump up and heal yourself. But So being able to hit that shining through underwater is really helpful. Also, and especially during heroics, you can drink pots underwater, so having a stack of Cure Serious Wounds pots is going to be very helpful too. Uh, having lots of PRR and hit points is going to be huge for us though. Getting hit a few times, no big deal. Just come in here and practice this on your own. It's not that scary. Remember pressing the space bar to go up quickly. Go ahead and hit shining through, and it works underwater. How cool is that? So you gotta fight that current when it turns on and off. Buff myself. Okay, so here we want Horn of Endurance, we also want the Gold Key, and we don't want to tr uh, touch the Glittering Treasure, it is poison, and your clue is that this guy, you can see he's down there twitching because he's poisoned, but let's go ahead and hit it. And, uh, I suddenly feel feverish. Cursed Contact Poison, Heal Scroll. Okay, so... Uh, if you don't have the swimming skills, you can uh, just go around to get the extra chest, but we're just going to swim upstream. Oh, I'm going to have to drink a curse pot. Oh, can't perform this action underwater. Maybe that's because of the certain kind of pot that it is? I don't know. Don't know why I can't drink that. So we're going upstream. And we're going to get this valve over here. And we're going to get the extra chest. It's also got some breakables here, so another good reason to do it. And this chest on Heroic, supposedly, can drop... Uh, diamonds of vitality. Don't think it does it on uh, on epic. Got some breakables. But if you're a traditional healing tune, there are going to be some spots like right here where, you know, like you can jump heal. See, you got this little cavern here like jump and throw heal. Piece of cake. See, this one's not that scary. Come on, what were you scared of? don't usually touch that poison so I think you gotta drink curse pot and then remove poison or cure I mean or heal but uh, I decided to touch the treasure pile in this video just to be a smart ass here's why we got that gate before so we can just come right back through there instead of going all the way around almost done
You do have to kill all these guys in this final hall. Uh, even that guy back at the bell, otherwise the kobold doesn't want to talk to you. These champions are no joke. They will hit you hard. Some of them. You can see I'm using minimum crowd control these days. You know, I've got the confusion and the burst. Um, I do use tentacles a fair bit, but you know, I'm not using Sleet Storm as much anymore. I'm just going to rest because I stanched it up once and I want to lose that. Sleet Storm is still great. I still use it occasionally, but most of the time I just find that with my survivability I'm able to just power through it. And I'm not even in Sentinel, which I think is going to be my permanent destiny. And so if I was in Sentinel I would have even more survivability. Talk to the Kobold. He sends you in here. You know this. And now you got to wait for Grogan the announcer to do his spiel. That's the same announcer from Von 1, Grogan. So we only have three guys to fight here because we got the uh, appropriate charisma check or uh, yeah, charisma skills check in the beginning. No need to find safe spots or jump around like a jackass or kite them around. We're just gonna go toe to toe with these guys. Because we're not scared. And that's the role I like to play, you know. You've heard me talk about this in other videos. That's I build my tunes to be super survivable. So I can be the one that can hold these guys aggro and so that you know everybody else in my party can beat on them safely from behind these guys do hit really hard and if you're not a tune that has a fair amount of survivability built in uh, into your build these guys are gonna one shot you you know they do that little triple swing you're done you felt it before you know what I'm talking about you've seen it happen These guys are no joke, but we make them look like kid stuff. All three of them beating on me, no problem. Don't panic. Been pugging out a little bit uh, lately, and I. <laughs> couple times with different people just in the last week or so you know we're doing like you know this or a tour and they're like are you sure we can 
just two mana? You want to get more people? I'm like, no problem. I can solo it. We got this. So I haven't even used Stanch here. Just used Shining through a couple times. Cocoon a couple times. Haven't even been using my uh, spell power boost thingy there. Tainted spell casting. I don't use that as much as I should. This is a great quest to be able to solo on EE because, you know, like I said in the EE tour video. People don't run these quests as much anymore, and there's some awesome loot that comes from here that you can sell for a fair bit. Like my Ghost Waking Cloak uh, that I got comes from here. There's some other nice items that come out of this quest too. So if you want to make a little, little bit of shards or some plat on the auction house, come and do these quests out here and uh, get yourself some good loot to sell. Got all the keys, come back up here, talk to this joker to finish it. 104,000. Not my first time doing it, otherwise it would have been more. Well hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. If you have questions about the build I'm doing, you can respond on the DDO Warlock forum. And if you are on Sarlona, you are welcome to send me a tell. Nothing for me.